Good morning, everybody. For the last two years, I have kept trying to go to Berlin uh, in Germany, and I always try and get friends to come with me, but everyone always bails in the end and never end up going. So today, I decided I'm going by myself. I'm now going to Berlin. I have a day trip planned for Dresden. I'm meeting my friend Jackie that lives there now. It's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So without further ado, let's go. So my gate opens in about 10 minutes and I just realized I left my backpack at security. So I'm a bit terrified that's gonna be like destroyed or something. How do I figure to bring a backpack? I literally just walked up, saw my backpack still sitting there. Anyone could have just taken it, taken the laptop out, taken the camera out. <sighs> How does this stuff happen to me? How do I forget my backpack? You know, I don't know why I ever fly Ryanair. This is literally gonna be my last time ever. The price of my flight just doubled because my bag doesn't quite fit, just ever so slightly doesn't fit into the compartment. Brick. I've now landed in Berlin. What's really interesting is I was taking a while in the incredibly cramped space to put on my coat, and this woman right next to me said, I'm just waiting for this stupid boy to hurry up. And I turned to her and said, excuse me? And she went, oh, I'm sorry, I was talking to my husband. Oh, that's all right, because I was, I'm, I'm a stupid boy. In the Netherlands, they told you not to do things. They said, no, do it, gang. But in, in um, Germany, it seems that they just have a lot of Australians that are like kind of attacking people. They have an off gang. <laughs> You know, I haven't even been in Berlin that long and I've already seen a lot of abandoned buildings. They look like really big abandoned buildings, really spooky, pretty cool. On the other side though, a bank. So, <laughs> so besides that one time where Dodie and I got a hostel together, which was just one bedroom split between us, say I'm getting a hostel for the first time with like bunk beds and other people I've never met. That's an experience. So, supposedly this way, here we go. Oh, Jackie's here. Oh, what's up? Jackie has joined me, and this is my room. Check out this elevator. That's so cool. Well, my hostel is nice. That is very nice. Nice, nice, nice. There nice, nice. The position. What should I get very quickly to eat while we're walking around? Duna. A doner kebab? A doner kebab. A doner. <laughs> Look how cute the little green men are in, oh, in German. <laughs> oh, and now it's Jesus. <laughs> What are we doing right now? Getting some coffee house. Some coffee. Some coffee house. Some coffee. Getting my first flat Weisse in uh, Deutschland. Stiles Wasser. Stiles Wasser? You have to go Stiles Wasser. I haven't learned the word flat yet, so I just say flat Weisse. <laughs> so, Yaki, Hello. wo sind wir? Oh, Via is in uh, the book burning memorial. So oh. basically, this is where the Nazis burned all the books and they oh. did a memorial <laughs> this way. You just threw coffee all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> I got that on camera. <laughs> I was too excited. You want to look at the look this what it looks like? This is also his coffee that I'm carrying around because he tried to litter. I'll have you all know. Nine. Nick Litter. So they memorialized it. <laughs> Coffee has been uh, cleaned. Um, they memorialized it with all these empty shelves to symbolize the books that were lost. Wow, that is really cool. Is that like... Isn't that cool? Is that... It goes all... It's huge. It's Whoa. a massive area. The Brandenburg tour. Brandenburg. Every block symbolizes 3,000 lives. Oh my god. And uh, which is a very sobering fact. Um, and basically what happens is that, you know, when you're looking at it from here, it seems very, you know, it kind of looks like a graveyard. Um, but as you start to walk through it, the blocks get higher and higher, and so eventually it gets to the point where they're like towering eight or nine or ten feet above you, and the ground goes like this, and the blocks uh, tilt inwards, and so it distorts sound, and it creates this very weird, hollow, oppressive, trapped feeling that's supposed to feel reminiscent of the Holocaust. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Jackie's about to have a glorious exit. I'm about to have some glorious food. Goodbye. So after much walking, the sun has gone down. I've now made it to Checkpoint Charlie, which is one of the checkpoints when Berlin was split between the US and Russia. She wants to dance like Uma Thurman. So I actually have very limited internet because my 3G doesn't really work, especially when I look at maps. And I tried so hard to find a good dinner place or, you know, a doner kebab. And I ended up walking two miles to find this stinking little tiny one on the side of the road right next to the Brandenburg Tor. And it turns out it's closed. So I'm just going to get some, like, typical Berlin food then from this place across the street. Because I haven't eaten all day. I've just been busy. After my amazing currywurst, I've met Jackie. <laughs> Oh. At the most ritzy restaurant. <laughs> we just randomly like, found. <laughs> I don't know, there's a pianist. There's a pianist playing beautiful music for us as we have candlelit dinner. And apple, apple strudel. I ordered apple strudel. With the cream? Yeah, with cream. Wait, with tell them one of your German pickup lines. Oh, I mean, I've said this in the video. <laughs> so, I just got some apple strudel. Live in the German life. <laughs> Lovely apple streusel and a lovely conversation with Jackie. I think it's nearly one o'clock in the morning now. We've been dog for like five hours. And now I'm we're getting tired. Ubers back to our places. And um, my teeth cost 16 euros. <laughs> I'm not upset about it. She got two things of tea and each one was eight pounds each. Wow, I guess the, the piano guy had to make money somehow. Eight pounds for tea. It was actually more expensive for her to two teas than it was for my glass of wine and apple streusel. Anyway, uh, now I'm gonna get my taxi. Here it is right now. Well, I'm finally back at my hostel in my nice little bunk bed here. Uh, first time for everything. Looks great. Uh, not gonna have much sleep because I'm gonna be waking up super early in the morning to get a super early train to Dresden for a Kurt Vonnegut tour. Very excited about that. Other than that, I guess uh, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. One of the last stops on the UMD tour is Frat Row, which looks ridiculously like the way that fraternities look in a movie. So I'm now on my Kurt Vonnegut tour. So we're going in here? Yeah.